my life, I've been passionate about digital. In general, there are two things that help me, like, you know, um, kind of improve the life and the experience of mine, both my agency clients and university students. Um, as an agency advertiser, with digital solutions, I help my clients, you know, develop the uh, online consumer paths. And um, I help them sell cars, I help them sell, sell houses and you know, sell smartphones, uh, cell phones, all these amazing things. As a lecturer, I benefit from digital solutions because, because basically it allows me to relax while at the same time delivering quality content to my students. For example, one of the benefits or the key benefits that I have found in recent probably five years is the fact that I do not really have to, you know, double check or grade the written, handwritten exams because everything currently is already online. This, you know, eliminates the human factor because I have no issues uh, of identifying, you know, whether there was a misspell or a mistake somewhere in the, in the text. The, the student already is like quite sure that um, his name was also properly spelled because he did not misspell it because, you know, everything is online. In addition to this, um, the exams which are being graded on, which are being done online, they are also being graded online. And uh, this grading experience is, is being done automatically. In general, I don't really even have, you know, to grade the papers or the exams of the students because based on the algorithms, and based on the uh, total experience of the students that they created or developed throughout the whole course, they are being able to being automatically graded and evaluated. And the, the single role of mine here is to make sure that everything works. And at the same time, while not grading the papers or the final exams, I'm able to relax somewhere on the beach take out the sky, you know, like take out the, the smartphone out of my pocket and uh, call, for example, my brother who's, who's currently staying somewhere in Germany. This is the key benefit of digital solutions in my personal experience at this point. For example, last year I had to go to a conference, Mobile World Congress somewhere in Barcelona. And um, instead of delivering a lecture, at that time, I decided to make a Hangout video. I posted it on YouTube, and the attendance was 120%. And, you know, I, I know that 100% is the maximum rate that you can get. But some students watched the video twice. So basically, the key benefit that I delivered to the student was the fact that, you know, he or she was able to choose whenever, whenever he or she wanted to attend the class, watch it, and if there was something wrong or unclear, double check it with the friends and come back later to the same material. So this is the key awesomeness, which has been sort of reduced the, uh, or which has, has increased the comfort zone of mine and also the experience of me as a lecturer slash, slash advertiser. Um, today we'll be talking about uh, the Turing test, a test which double checks whether you are, you are a human or, or a program. And um, you are able to double check, like, you know, whether I'm saying right or wrong things, whether I make some mistakes on your smartphones, because um, the ability to sort of be at the same time offline and on online, it synergizes your experience as a student. And, um, at this point, I hear, like, I, I hear uh, one very sort of like, you know, contradictory idea that instead of like, you know, forcing the students to, like, you know, like, to put the lids with the laptops into the, into the baskets and, and, and shove the phone somewhere else, I encourage them to actually take them out and li leave the lid open as, as long as possible because I know that sometimes me, you, like all the people are kind of shy to raise the hand and ask a question. And instead of raising a hand or asking a question, you can just Google the, the answer. And if, if I make a mistake or somebody else who's like, you know, presenting a topic is making a mistake, you're always 
you know, allowed and welcome and, and being encouraged to double check, verify the stuff, and, you know, and, and improve the overall learning experience. This is why I'm saying that technology is enabling. And one of the key benefits that, for example, a friend of mine has found with this enabling technology is the fact that he is able to verify and double check the parents of a child that he has, like you know, a small boy, and he really wants to make sure that he grows in the proper environment and that he doesn't really have the wrong friends. So what he does, he double checks like, you know, if, if the father or the mother um, has some wrong experience or, you know, like on Facebook, on social networks. Apparently, probably five or ten years ago, this would have been considered as stalking. Um, not anymore, because this is the common practice. And you're also available, like, you know, to double check whatever you want online. In fact, he's so protective about his child that he is considering an idea of probably purchasing or buying a friend, you know, for his baby boy. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, buying somebody who is from a neighboring country, but I'm talking about buying an artificial friend, artificial intelligence-based friend, which will do the right things and, and encourage the boy to, you know, to actually go the right path in the future. If he has problems with math, the artificial friend, which will be purchased, will help the boy develop the math skills. If he or she has some issues with tennis, then the artificial friend will do that, um, will, will help with this experience like, you know, to, to, to be developed. The key thing, which sometimes we think that um, the key issue, that sometimes we think that could raise with these artificial friends, is the fact that we sometimes could be um, kind of discouraged the idea that you know some somebody slash someone is artificial, not real human. You know this is the problem, and here comes the point which I, which I raised a couple of minutes ago when I was talking about the Turing test. The Turing test, which which verifies whether you are a human or a program, that was passed this year which means that a program successfully pretended in front of like, you know, the experienced experts um, that the program was a 13-year-old boy. So basically, at this point, we already have a case where a program is so advanced, or the artificial intelligence is so advanced that it is able to successfully pretend being a real human being, a 13-year-old boy. You know, this is, this, is, this is a lot. This brings to so much potential. For example, in the future, you know, imagine those 13-year-old programs grow to 20-year-old or something like that, and they will fill your classes with virtual classmates. Um, instead of having like, you know, 20 classmates in your classroom, you will have 700. And out of those 700 classmates, apparently 590 or even more will be artificial programs. And as most of you will be talking to them online, you know, chatting, discussing, uh, uh, raising questions, answering them, you will not really know whether, you know, this ABCDF was a real person or an artificial developed uh, program, which brings us to even more potential in this case. A um, couple of years ago, I took a class in Coursera. The key benefit for me, which I found on this solution, was the fact that I was able to solve um, a problem in the business management case with another 700 teams worldwide, with each team having something like 10 to 20 members, imagine, this is, this is, oh my God, this is such a think tank. I, I am like, you know, I am amazed by the empowerment and the, the potential of this. Um, take this concept and apply it in your everyday classroom. Instead of like, you know, working on the paper with two or three friends, you can work on the same problem 
with 7,000 artificial friends. And for me as a lecturer, it's not a problem because anyway, I'm not really grading the papers anymore. The papers are being graded themselves and the exams as well. So whether there are like, you know, 70 or 700 students in the classroom, it's totally the same. Um, and the key benefit is that if I do my job wrong and I fail, there's always a better me, a better artificial me who can substitute me in front of you. I mean, ain't this awesome? Kind of scary, right? <laughs> to be honest. But at this point, we also come to the, um, to the, to the, to the problem which could raise, you know, from this potential which is coming up in front of us, uh, the problem of digitophobia. Because there will be people who will be sort of terrified with this idea. They will feel like this, you know, they, they are being, you know, their jobs are being taken away or something like that. But, you know, don't mind those people. Uh, embrace, embrace the potential of the artificial classmates. Embrace the potential of artificial friends. And at some point, all this technology that you're using now, like, for example, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, they will seem such an ancient technology that they will look like basically Egyptian pyramids. And um, you will feel like, you know, there's something wrong probably like with them. But once again, um, I presume that you are like, kind of raising the question, uh, what, if, what if I really can distinguish that this text was written by a real person or, you know, that the text was written by, by the algorithm? We don't need the future. Even today, even now, we have solutions which already full, fulfill um, the web with artificially generated text, like, for example, random text generators. I mean, they're not really advanced at this point, but still, they manage to fill the sites or on the web, which have the single purpose, to be found on the web and um, to host banners, which, when you come to this dummy site, you will basically like, you know, load the banner and the person that created the site will get a portion of the income. So this already is being done. And um, it's not really a matter of artificial versus, you know, real, but what is the potential of the artificial? And the potential officially, theoretically, of artificial is that it can be more original. It can be more unique than any of us here. I'm not talking about DNA. I'm not talking about biology. I'm talking about the ideas. I mean, all of us, we live in the environments you know, who, that created us. Presume programs which come from different races or different religions, and uh, the single purpose of them being is in this classroom is to defend, for example, you know, um, socialism or, you know, or, or liberalism or whatever ism that they represent. And they will work hard on, defi on defending those statements. And you will feel challenged because you will feel like, you know, this is my mental um, sort of uh, nemesis, the one that, that uh, presents the ideas that I don't really understand, but I feel like those ideas are being well argumented and well structured. And this is the potential of artificial classmates in your futures. Talking about the artificial and automated solutions, even today, I, as an agency employee, already work with the automation, such as, for example, one client um, is waiting for 30 degrees outside of the window, and at that point, there will be a Facebook post promoting their, you know, their, their ice cream. There's another client waiting for snow to come up, and at that point, there's going to be a sale for winter jackets. And it doesn't matter if the snow comes tomorrow or in December because everything is already automated to the future. To be honest, this is the life where you know, you automate the things, you plan the things in the future, and you relax. 
and enjoy your, 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 your beach holiday. For example, this is the thing that I did last summer. I went to Greece, and at the same time, I was so super active and so super social on the web. I was engaging on Twitter with all the tweets from my, you know, like my circles and my expertise field. But at the same time, at the same time, take this into account, at the same time, I had zero internet connection. How is it possible? Very simple. Everything is being done via the automation which you program into the future. There's a solution called Social um, Afterlife, and the program is called Lives On, which detects that you might be dead. Imagine that, right? And it starts tweeting on your behalf. So the creepiness of this awesomeness is that imagine yourself dead, and at the same time, none of your friends know that because you're still socially active. Oh my god, right? This is so awesome. Um, imagine a life where instead of having to attend classes, you will be able to do whatever you want. For example, snowboarding. I mean, I would love to do that. Instead of work, snowboard. But there's a problem raising from this thing. And the problem is, the social connection which we develop with the people that, that we, you know, solve the problems with or interact with. And this problem comes here. Um, imagine that all the, all the four years that you usually would have probably, you know, failed the exams, studied a lot, developed new skills uh, with your friends. You just snowboard. And there's a program which is, that, which is doing that instead of you, replacing you in all these activities. So what happens next? Um, when Johnny is having a birdie body, he's inviting, you know, Agent 3750, which has been attending the classes all the time, has failed the exams together with him, and, like, you know, and, and, and who developed this social connection, even though he's not really like, you know, a human. But you're being out, you know, you're being kicked out of your social environment because of the potential which you embrace and decide to choose. So at this point, I raise you, um, I encourage you to make two choices. Choice number one is when you will be embraced and when you feel like, you know, you will feel the potential of the artificial solutions being your classrooms and your, you know, like your, your environments, don't be afraid. Do not be digitophobic, because there is a lot more potential there than there's, you know, like you know, fear or something else. But at the same time, before that happens, or even when this happens, um, try and keep on building the social connections that you have with your friends currently and the people that you work with now, because if you do not do that, in that case the artificial you will basically, well, replace you. That's it. Thank you.